सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक फुट प्रिंट्स विदाउट फीट सप्लीमेंट्री रीडर इन इंग्लिश फॉर क्लास टेन पेज सिक्सटी थ्री चैप्टर टेन द बुक दैट सेव्ड द अर्थ विद इन बॉक्स मदर गूज इज अ वेल नोन बुक ऑफ नर्सरी राइम्स इन इंग्लिश Do you think such a book can save planet Earth from a Martian invasion? Read this story. Set your four centuries in the future and find out. Now, the characters. The characters in this uh, drama is historian and he is Lieutenant Iota, great and mighty think tank. He is Sergeant Oop. apprentice noodle he is off stage voice and captain omega scene 1 read and find out 1 why was the 20th century called the era of the book 2 who tried to invade the earth in the 21st century now here begins the drama time the 25th century place the museum of ancient history department of the 20th century on the planet earth before rise spotlight shines on historian who is sitting at a table down right on which is a movie projector a sign on on easel beside her reads museum of ancient history department of the 20th century she stands and bows to audience historian good afternoon welcome to our museum of ancient history and to my department curiosities of the good old far off 20th century the 20th century was often called the era of the book in those days there were books about everything from antiquer to zulus books taught people how to and when to and where to and why to they illustrated educated punctuated and even decorated page 64 but the strangest thing a book ever did was to save the earth you haven't heard about the martian invasion of 2040 task task what do they teach children nowadays well you know the invasion never really happened because a single book stopped it what was the book you ask a nobel encyclopedia a tome about rockets and missiles a secret file from outer space no it was none of those it was it was but here let me turn on history scope and show you what happened many centuries ago In 2040, within bracket it comes. She turns on projector and points it left. Spotlight on historian goes out and comes up down left on think tank, who is seated on a raised box, arms folded. He was a huge egg-shaped head, and he wears a long robe decorated with stars and circles. Apparentis Noodle stands beside him at an elaborate switchboard. A sign on an easel reads: Mars Space Control. Great and mighty think tank, Commander in Chief, bow low before entering. Now the role: Noodle, bowing. A great and mighty think tank. most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe what are your orders think tank peevishly you left out part of my salutation apprentice noodle go over the whole thing again noodle it shall be done sir in a sing song oh great and mighty think tank ruler of mars and her two moons most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe out of breath what are your orders think tank 
that's better noodle i wish to be placed in communication with our manned space probe to that ridiculous little planet we are going to put under our generous rulership what do they call it again noodle earth your intelligence think tank earth of course you see how insignificant the place is but first something important my mirror i wish to consult my mirror page 65 noodle it shall be done sir he hands think tank a mirror think tank mirror mirror in my hand who is the most fantastically intellectually gifted being in this land off stage voice after a pause you sir think tank smacking mirror quicker answer quicker next time i hate a slow mirror he admires himself in the mirror ah there i am are we martian not a handsome race so much more attractive than those ugly earthlings with their tiny heads noodle you keep on exercising your mind and some day you will have a balloon brain just like mine noodle oh i hope so mighty think tank i hope so think tank now contact the space probe i want to invade that primitive ball of mud called earth before lunch noodle it shall be done sir he adjusts levers on switchboard electronic buzzes and beeps are heard as the curtains open scene 2 read and find out one what guesses are made by think tank about the books found on earth now here begins the drama time a few seconds later place mars space control and the centreville public library at rise captain omega stands at center opening and closing card catalog drawers in a confused fashion Lieutenant Iota is up left counting books in a bookcase. Sergeant Oop is at right opening and closing a book, turning it upside down, shaking it and then riffling the pages and shaking his head. Noodle adjusting knobs. I have a close sighting of the space crew sir. It comes within bracket. Think tank puts on a pair of enormous goggles and uh, turns towards the stage to watch they seem to have entered some sort of earth structure think tank excellent make voice contact page 66 noodle speaking into microphone mars space control calling the crew of probe 1 Mars Space Control calling the crew of Probe One. Come in, come in, Captain Omega, and give us your location. Omega, speaking into a disc which is on a chain around her neck. Captain Omega to Mars Space Control, Lieutenant Iota, Sergeant Oop, and I have arrived on Earth without incident. We have taken shelter in this. and he indicates the room square place have you any idea where we are lieutenant iota iota i can't figure it out captain holding up a book i have counted 2000 of these peculiar items these place must be some sort of storage barn what do you think sergeant oop sergeant oop i haven't a clue I have been to seven galaxies but I have never seen anything like this maybe they are hats he opens a book and puts it on his head say maybe this is a haberdashery omega bowing low perhaps the great and mighty think tank will give us the benefit of uh, his thought on this matter page 67 think tank elementary my dear omega hold one of the items up so that i may view it closely omega holds a book on the palm of her hand 
Yes, yes, I understand now. Since earth creatures are always eating, the place in which you find yourself is undoubtedly a crude refreshment stand. Omega, he says to Ayota and Oop, he says we are in a refreshment stand. Oop, well, the earthlings certainly have a strange diet. Think tank, this item in your hand is called a sandwich. Omega, nodding, a sandwich? Iota, nodding, a sandwich. Oop, taking book from his head, a sandwich? Think tank, sandwiches are the main staple of earth diet. Look at it closely. Omega squints at book. There are two slices of what is called bread and between them is some sort of filling. Omega, that is correct, sir. Think tank. To confirm my opinion, I order you to eat it. Omega, gulping, eat it? Think tank. Do you doubt the mighty think tank? Page 68. Omega. Oh, no, no. But poor Lieutenant Iota has not had her breakfast. Lieutenant Iota, I order you to eat this. This sandwich. Iota. Dubiciously. Eat it? Oh, Captain, it's a very great honor to be the first Martian to eat a sandwich. I am sure, but uh, but uh, how can I be so impolite as to eat before my sergeant? Handing Oop the book and saying brightly, Sergeant Oop, I order you to eat the sandwich immediately. Oop, making a face. Who? Lieutenant? Me? Lieutenant? Iota and Omega saluting for the glory of Mars. Oop. Oop. Yes, of course. Unhappy. Immediately, he opens his mouth wide. Omega and Iota watch him breathlessly. He bites down on a corner of the book and pantomimes, chewing and swallowing while making terrible faces. Omega. Well, oop. Iota. Well, oop. Oop cups. Omega and Iota pound him on the back. Think tank. What is not delicious, Sergeant Oop? Oop, saluting. That is correct, sir. It was not delicious. I don't know how the earthlings can get those sandwiches down without water. They are dry as Martian dust. Noodle, sir. Sir, great and mighty think tank. I beg your pardon, but an insignificant bit of data floated into my mind about those sandwiches. Think tank. It can't be worth much, but go ahead. Give us your trifling bit of data. Noodle. Well, sir, I have seen survey films of those sandwiches. I noticed that the earthlings did not eat them. They used them as some sort of communication device. Think tank, how did he? Naturally, that was my next point. These are actually communication sandwiches. Think tank is never wrong. Who is never wrong? All saluting great and mighty think tank is never wrong. Think tank, therefore, I order you to listen to them. Page 69. Omega, listen to them. Iota and Oop to each other puzzled. Listen to them? Think tank, do you have marvels in your ears? I said, listen to them. Martian, bow very low. Omega, it shall be done, sir. They each take two books from the case and hold them to their ears, listening intently. Iota, whispering to Omega, do you hear anything? Omega, whispering back, Nothing. Do you hear anything, Oop? Oop, loudly, not a thing. Omega and Iota jump in fright. Omega and Iota, shh. They listen intently again. Think tank, well, well, report to me. What do you hear? 
Omega, nothing, sir. Uh, perhaps we are not uh, on the correct frequency. Iota, nothing, sir. Perhaps the earthlings have uh, sharper ears than we do. Oop, I don't hear a thing. Maybe these sandwiches don't make sounds. Think tank, what? Does somebody suggest the mighty think tank has made a mistake? Omega, oh, no, sir. No, sir. Uh, we will keep listening. Noodle, please excuse me, your brilliance, but uh, a cloudy piece of information is uh, twirling around in my head. Think tank, well, twirl it out. Noodle, and uh, I will clarify it for you. Noodle, I seem to recall that uh, the earthlings did not listen to the sandwiches. They opened them and watched them. Think tank. Yes, that is quite correct. I will clarify that for you, Captain Omega. Those sandwiches are not for ear communication. They are for eye communication. Now, Captain Omega, take that large colorful sandwich over there. It appears to be important. Tell me what you observe. Omega picks up a very large volume of Mother Goose holding it so that uh, the audience can see the title. Iota looks over her left shoulder and Oop peers over her right shoulder. Page 70 Omega It appears to contain pictures of earthlings. Iota There seems to be some sort of code. Think tank Sharply interested. Code? I told you this was important. Describe the code. Oop, it's little lines and squiggles and dots. Thousands of them alongside the pictures. Think tank. Perhaps the earthlings are uh, not uh, as primitive as uh, we have thought. We must break the code. Noodle, forgive me, your cleverness, but... Uh, did not the chemical department give our space people vitamins to increase their intelligence? Think tank. Stop. A thought of magnificent brilliance has come to me. Space people, our chemical department has given you vitamins to increase your intelligence. Take them immediately and then watch the sandwich. The meaning of the code will slowly unfold before you. Omega. It shall be done, sir. Remove vitamins. Now, crew takes vitamins from boxes on their belts. Present vitamins. They hold vitamins out in front of them stiffly. Swallow vitamins. Page 71. They pop the vitamin into their mouths and gulp simultaneously. They open their eyes wide. Their heads shake and they put their heads to their foreheads. Think tank. Excellent. Now decipher that code. All. It shall be done, sir. They frown over the book, turning pages. Omega. Brightly. Aha! Iota. Brightly. Oho! Oop! Bursting into laughter. <laughs> Think tank. What does it say? Tell me this instant. Transcribe Omega. Omega. Yes, sir. She reads with great seriousness. Mistress Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With cuckoo shells and silver bells and pretty maids all in a row. Oop! Ha ha ha! Imagine that! Pretty maids growing in a garden! Think tank! Alarmed! Stop! This is no time for levity! Don't you realize the seriousness of this discovery? The earthlings have discovered how to combine agriculture and mining. They can actually grow crops of rare metals such as silver and cuckoo shells. They can grow high explosive too. 
Noodle, contact your invasion fleet. Noodle, they are ready to go down and take over Earth, sir. Think Tank, tell them to hold. Tell them now information has come to us about Earth. Iota, transcribe. Iota, yes, sir. She reads very gravely. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon, the little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Oop, laughing. <laughs> the dish ran away with the spoon? Page 72. Think tank. Seize laughter, desist. This is more and more alarming. The earthlings have reached a high level of civilization. Didn't you hear? They have taught their domesticated animals musical culture and space techniques. Even their dogs have a sense of humor. Why at this moment they may be launching an interplanetary attack of millions of cows? Notify the invasion fleet. No invasion today. Oop, transcribe the next code. Oop, yes sir, reading. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put Humpty Dumpty together again. Oh, look sir, here is a picture of Humpty Dumpty. Why sir, he looks like... He looks like... Turn large picture of Humpty Dumpty towards Think Tank and the audience. Think Tank screaming and holding his head. It's me! It's my great and mighty balloon brain! The earthlings have seen me! And they are after me! Had a great fall! That means they plan to capture Mars central control and me. It's an invasion of Mars. Noodle, prepare a space capsule for me. I must escape without delay. Space people, you must leave Earth at once. But be sure to remove all traces of your visit. The Earthlings must... Repeat. The Earthlings must not know that I know. Omega, Iota and Oop rush about, putting books back on shelves. Noodle. Where shall we go, sir? Think Tank. A hundred million miles away from the Mars. Order the invasion fleet to evacuate the central planet of Mars. We are heading for Alpha Centauri, a hundred million miles away. Omega, Iota and Oop run off right as uh, Noodle helps Think Tank off left and the curtain closes. Spotlight shines on Historian down right. Page 73 Historian chuckling and that's how one dusty old book of nursery rhymes saved the world from a Martian invasion. As you all know, in the 25th century, 500 years after all this happened, we earthlings resumed contact with Mars. And we even became very friendly with the Martians. By that time, great and mighty think tank had been replaced by a very clever Martian. The wise and wonderful Noodle. Oh yes, we taught the Martian the difference between sandwiches and books. We taught them how to read too. And we established a model library in their capital city of uh, Marsopolis. But as you might expect, there is still one book that the Martians can never bring themselves to read. You have guessed it. Mother goes. She bows and exits right. Curtain. By Clary Boyko. Now the glossary. Easel means wooden frame to support a blackboard or a picture. Zulus, an African ethnic group belonging to South Africa. Apprentice, learner of a trade who has agreed to work for a certain period of time in return for being taught. Peevishly means irritably. 
rifling. It means quickly turning over the pages of a book. Barn, covered building for storing hay. Haderdashery means shop which sells clothing, small articles of dress, pins, cottons, etc. Swiggles means scrawls, eligible writing or markings. Decipher means find the meaning of something which is puzzling and difficult to understand. Transcribe, write in full form from shorthand. Levity, tendency to treat serious matters without respect. Lack of seriousness. Page 74. Think about it. 1. Noodle avoids offending think tank, but uh, at the same time, he corrects his mistake. How does he manage to do that? Question 2. If you were in Noodle's place, how would you handle think tank's mistakes? 3. Do you think books are being replaced by electronic media? Can we do away with books altogether? 4. Why are books referred to as a man's best companion? Which is your favorite book and why? Write a paragraph about that book. Talk about it. 1. In what ways does Think Tank misinterpret innocent nursery rhymes as threats to the Martians? Can you think of any incident where you misinterpreted a word or an action? How did you resolve the misunderstanding? 2. The aliens in this play speak English. Do you think this is their language? What could be language of the aliens? Suggested reading. 1. Diamond Cuts Diamond by J. H. Parker. 2. The Cinderella Story by Kenneth Lillington. 3. The Fun They Had by Isaac Ismo. Page 75. Answers given by Professor Yashpal and Dr. Rahul Pal. See questions on page 38. 1. DNA exists as strands of bases that carry genetic information specific to each living thing. The sequence of bases of DNA in each of our cells is the same, but differs from that of any other living thing except possibly an identical twin. This difference makes the DNA break at different places when certain proteins called enzymes are added to it, resulting in similar DNA fragments of different sizes. These fragments migrate at different rates in an electric field, resulting in a unique pattern. This pattern is referred to as a DNA fingerprint. Our DNA is inherited from our parents. Some parts come from the father and some from the mother. DNA fingerprinting can help identify parentage since a son or a daughter would always exhibit a pattern of identificable as coming from both parents. DNA fingerprinting analysis is very useful in forensic science. From a single hair or a tiny spot of blood, it is possible to prove the innocence or guilt of a murder suspect. Similarly, it is also possible to identify human remains after violent accident have caused disfigurement. It has been suggested that in the not so distant future, a DNA fingerprinting profile of the individual will have to accompany applications for an ID card, a bank account and a driving license. Human rights groups say this type of genetic profiling constitutes an invasion of privacy. As with a lot of new technology, DNA fingerprinting has also a potential for abuse. 2. Honey bees are very sophisticated at position, location and navigation. It is known that they use 
the sun as a guide. They also appear to have a good memory. They convey the information of a new find of food to the hive through an amazingly clever dance language. The dance indicates the direction and distance of the food source with respect to the direction of the sun in the sky. If it is dark inside the hive and a light bulb is switched on, the dance is modified to include the light bulb as a new reference direction. Since bees have a pictorial memory of some sort, a direction finding mechanism and a way of reckoning distance, they are probably better equipped for getting back home than any of us. 3. Rain is the result of condensation of vapor when the air is cooled below the dew point. All the vapors in a cloud cannot condense at the same time and turn into a large pool of water. Pockets of air move up independently and slowly cool till condensation begins and water droplets form. It is believed that most raindrops start out as tiny ice crystals, so tiny that they float down slowly, creating more moisture on the way at lower altitudes. The crystals melt into water droplets. In colder climates, the crystals reach the ground as snowflakes. You were just listening to Footprints Without Feet, Supplementary Reader in English for Class 10. Production Assistance, Soumya Malik, read and produced by Ajit Horo. This audiobook is presented to you by CIET, NCERT, New Delhi. India.